Why hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Abbott Reviewer to the third review of the Combiner Wars series. This time it's the big, the burly, Super Combiner Wars Brawl! Brawl of the Deluxe Tank. And actually a pretty slick one too in the sense that he actually looks like an actual tank, as opposed to the futuristic design liberties of this guy. Not to say I don't like Warpath or that the H-Tank is dumb or anything, I just honestly prefer Brawl's alt mode. Though one knocks whatever Warpath is that the old H-Tank actually got to rotate the turret, Whereas Brawl, all he can do is point the gun up. That's not quite all he can do, though. I mean, half transforming this guy could give a siege mode or something. Rosie. Order, sir. Absolutely. For In short, the tank mode itself is fantastic, though the color that left something to be desired. Pictured here is what's left of the original color. This pukey brown. Almost Blastoff's color, but just a bit more sickly. And while no, my painting skills aren't exactly the best or even great, I'm still happy with the result, that being the proper color of army green. See, that's the thing about Brawl. I mean, it's fine on its own, but once you start importing your own skins, man, does it ever get that much more awesome. Just, again, I have nothing but good things to say about the tank mode. It looks great, the color is great now, and when I envision Brawl, this is the burly alt mode I think of. Alright then, because this guy isn't a clone of anybody, I get to talk about transformation and articulation. So let's go leg mode. Take the back of the tank and unclip and rotate it around. Move the turret up. Ta-da! Done. Now pop out your combiner plug and you're ready to stand. This leg is just so amazing. I mean, look at it. It's so tidy. It works. There's no kibble hanging off anywhere. At least, none that hasn't been there since the animated appearance, the video game presence, or even his original toy. It's just so clean and tidy. Another option you can do, by the way, is to rotate the turret back around if you don't like the kneecap sticking up so much. But I don't quite recommend it because things start bumping into each other down there. Anyway, just... Wow, this leg, and what an amazing compliment to Swindle, a character I also said was a fantastic leg. Both of these vehicles are just so well put together with zero kibble. I don't think I can say enough just how much I love these two as legs. They just work so well together. Alright then, I guess we're forced by posterity to cover the arm, lest I get torched in the comments. Turn the plug 90 degrees, pull out the arms and rotate them 90 as well. Pull out the legs and accordion around the leg joints. And arm mode. I'm sorry, that's lame. What a cluttered mess. And I know every iteration of Brawl as a toy has been like this for an arm, which is probably why nobody ever does this save for a handful of people. Alright then, bot mode. Put the plug inside the chest. Rotate the arms 180 degrees. Rotate out the forearms. Accordion over the waist hinge until it softly clicks. Separate the legs, move the turret to the back, and finally pull the head out. However, if you're coming straight from tank mode, you will also have to rotate the waist 180 degrees. And here we have it. The Binder Wars Deluxe Bra- Aw, oh, come on! Tripping? For real? Why would you implement tripping, Brawl? Ugh. Anyway, here's bot mode. And you know what? I love this guy. I can honestly say I never expected to, given initial reviews I'd seen and photos. But man, the proportions, the design, the heft, the bulk, he's just awesome. Though, of course, Brawl is the one that heavily divided fans. I mean, because of the heft, he is a bit slower, he is a bit clunkier, he is a bit more realistic looking, tripping is a factor, as well as the removal of wave dashing. But all in all, I wholeheartedly love it to bits. So now let's talk about the number one reason why everybody writes this guy off as a failure. The core mechanic introduced in this guy, tripping, I mean, the torso. Rather than have a solid chunk for a body, Hasbro opted to have his upper body supported by a thin piece of plastic. How does this come off looking? Honestly, I can forget this non-issue even exists. The only way you can really see it is if both arms are up and you're looking at the guy sideways. Otherwise, every other angle looks solid to me. So really, the only way this becomes an issue is if you're looking for it and you love to nitpick. But what about the fact that it comes apart so easily because of the way it was designed? Maybe it's just my copy. I don't know, but in my experience, the only time it ever came apart was if I, like, really shook the toy. And the only people I ever see doing that are people reviewing the toy, almost trying to get it to come apart to showcase their point. In practice, it holds together well enough, and is certainly nowhere near as bad as the shoulder joints you might find in a Masterpiece Seeker. 
If you really are intent on fixing this issue, I've seen some people swap the legs on the ball joints, spin the crotch around and orient it this way. This doesn't even remotely stay in place. I don't recommend it. Some people like to click the combiner plug down a little bit to fill in the gap. It's not what I like, and if that's what you want to do, go for it. However, I find that it becomes less stable if you do that. Another thing I've seen being done is to make some heavy modifications with a router to the black plastic bit so that it all stays flat. This is risky, it does make them a bit shorter, but it's an option. Basically, I don't understand why everyone's just writing this guy off as a failure and missing the bigger point of this guy, such as articulation. Head is on a swivel and can look up. Outward shoulder movement and 360 spin. Elbows on a ball joint. Truth be told, this is my least favorite way to do an elbow, but it works. I mean, it works so well that you can reassemble the tank bit and have tanks with legs. So, so far, this has all been pretty standard articulation we've seen in deluxe figures. What makes this guy so great is from here on out. So, we've seen thigh swivel in that tank rotation bit I just did, outward leg movement, forward and backward leg movement, thigh swivel, knee bend, and my favorite part. We have massive foot clompers that have forward articulation, a second joint for backward articulation, and a full-on 90-degree ankle tilt. Other features include the tank barrel coming out of the turret and being used as a gun. This means the poses like this, and this, and this, coupled with the stability of the feet to make stable, unassisted walking all possible. Couple that with the detail in the legs, the thighs, the chest, the treaded shoulders, everywhere. So let me get this straight. This guy has a full-fledged emissary worth stature, a fully detailed design, great features, an incredible limb mode, replayability, amazing multiplayer fun, and are writing it all off as the biggest toy disappointment of 2016 because Hasbro tripped on the abs. Okay then. Long story short, no, Brawl isn't perfect, but all things considered, I wholeheartedly believe he is the best of the Combiner Wars Deluxes. He has so much posability, the tank is solid, as a leg too, and the very notion that it's a trash toy because it has hollowish angles from a very specific angle, that's just silly. I'm sorry, I can't even remotely see your point of view. Anyway, this has been an extensive review of the tank from the third in the Super Smash Bruticus series, and apparently one I really, really like. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow Review.